I played more than 25 hours of Black Myth Wukong and there are some things I wish I knew before I started that will help you out a lot. Real quick, thanks to Game Science for sponsoring this video, totally check the game out via the special link in the video description. Now even though it's the first ability you unlock, you definitely don't want to underestimate how useful the Immobilize spell is. It freezes an enemy in place for a couple of seconds so you can use it to get some free hits in or heal yourself without the risk of getting hit back. But I also discovered you can use it to cancel a boss's attack. You see, when you immobilize an enemy with the ability and then hit them with a powerful attack like a charged heavy, you break them out of the immobilization, but you'll also stagger them. And if they were charging up a powerful attack while you immobilize them, they'll be knocked out of the channel and won't perform the attack at all. This early boss who'd summoned snakes to fight for him was made a lot easier because every time he'd go for the move, I'd just immobilize him and smack him out of it, making the fight a lot easier. It definitely requires some quick reflexes, but if you're fast enough, you can avoid some very dangerous attacks by using this spell. And on the note of boss fights, while they can give you a powerful new ability or crafting material themselves, you also want to explore the area surrounding the boss arena for loot. There's a special type of item that I've often found right after a boss fight, and it's in these little golden chests that are easy to overlook if you don't know what you're looking for. But you definitely don't want to make the mistake of leaving these behind, as they include max health, stamina, and mana upgrades. So keep your eyes open for a scythe path or a little nook after beating a boss to not miss these golden chests. You also want to keep an eye out for a special vendor in chapter 2 who will sell you a variety of upgrades including health, stamina, and mana, but also general defense or extra status resistance. The vendor is located next to the seller shrine in the Crouching Tiger Temple and you buy his stock with the Mindcore item that will drop from various bosses and mini bosses so you're free to pick which upgrades you think are most beneficial to you. However, I kind of forgot about this guy as I moved on, as he stays in the same location while you move on to the next chapter. But since fast travel also allows you to return to earlier chapter areas, you can check back at any time to see if you can buy more upgrades. The same is true for the monkey in chapter 1 that allows you to upgrade your flasks and drinks, allowing you to get more uses out of your healing item and increase the potency of the effect. So don't make the same mistake I did and forget about them, them, you can easily check which shrine you find them at as their portrait will be next to it in the fast travel menu. There's actually more you can do to upgrade your healing that I'll go over in a bit and you can of course expect way more tips and tricks on the channel so subscribe to not miss those and leave a like if you at any point found the video helpful. So another important aspect of Wukong is stamina management as it works different than what you're probably used to. Obviously dodging and attacking costs stamina as does charging up a heavy attack so that is pretty standard. What's different is what happens when you run out, as most games will completely limit you from using moves that cost stamina. However, in Black Myth Wukong, you can still attack without stamina, you just can't perform a combo finisher. Similarly, where you're normally able to chain three quick dodges together, if your stamina bar is empty, you can only perform one before it goes on a short cooldown. So while you're not completely incapacitated when you run out of stamina, it is still really important to pay attention to the meter and let it regenerate when you run out. Standing still for just a little bit can already get you back quite a bit of stamina, meaning you're ready to dodge the next combo coming your way and counter with a full combo of your own. But the biggest mistake that you want to avoid is not investing in your staff stun skill tree. I want to go over individual skills in a different video, but there are two reasons why you want to invest in this tree over the others. At level 5 and 20 respectively, you'll unlock the pillar and thrust stances, so gaining access to these allows you to be much more versatile in combat. But even if you don't plan on using these stances, there's another major reason to invest in the stance tree and that's unlocking more focus points. These are the resource you spend on your heavy attacks and the more focus spent on a single attack, the more powerful that attack becomes. So basically each heavy attack has three different levels it can trigger at with a slightly different animation for each one as well, but you need more than one focus point if you want to access the second and third level. So in order to unlock those extra focus points, you simply want to invest in the stance tree. Which skills you get doesn't really matter, but after investing only 3 skill points, you already get a second focus point. Investing 10 skill points gets you your third, granting you access to the most powerful level of heavy attack. You can also invest more to get another focus point slot on top, but that one works a bit differently and is therefore less of a priority. But investing those 10 points early to unlock max level heavy attacks is really something you want 
want to do as soon as possible. And those charged heavy attacks are going to be extra useful to deal massive damage against the game's many bosses and mini bosses. Some bosses and enemies marked with a special glow allow you to capture their spirit and use their powers for yourself after meeting with a certain NPC in the first chapter, so early on in the game close to the snake trail shrine. And these stolen powers are different from the transformation skills that allow you to play in a different form for a while as spirits only allow you to perform a single special attack. But spirits come with an extra benefit as pretty much all of them come with a passive effect. So the snake summoner boss I mentioned earlier allows you to steal his snake summoning skills for yourself but he also increases your poison resistance while equipped. So if you're struggling with a boss or a specific area don't forget to check if changing your spirit might be helpful. Oh and another thing that's useful if you kill a boss with a spirit before you are able to capture them by meeting that NPC I mentioned don't worry. This happened to me with the wandering white boss but I found you'll actually be able to reclaim them later from a shrine once you've unlocked the spirit feature so again by talking to that NPC. And the wandering white in particular is actually pretty good as he gives you a general boost to your defense. And while you can skip the boss when you encounter him you want to return to him as soon as possible as he can also disappear so don't make that mistake. There's also a neat trick to give yourself some extra healing charges as there are these sparks of will that next to currency also refill one charge of your healing flask. So while you always want to interact with these for the money you might want to wait if your flask is full if there are also enemies around so you can refill it after the fight if you need it. And vice versa if your flask is full but your health is not make sure you drink before picking up a mode otherwise you'll lose out on a potential charge. And while these bones only restore a single charge if you manage to take down a spirit bearing enemy they will give you a full recharge for your gourd after absorbing them regardless of how many uses you've spent. So while they can be challenging don't be afraid to use your healing charges during the fight with these glowing enemies as taking them down gives it all back anyways. And one item that benefits massively from this is the Trailblazer Scarlet Gourd, an item you can immediately grab if you pre-ordered the game. If you didn't don't worry it's also available in the game and once we figured out how to get it we'll link a guide in the pinned comment. But yeah the reason why this item is so good is because as long as your gourd is full the first sip restores you back to full health no matter how hard you got hit or what drink is in your flask. And yeah since you have multiple ways of refilling your gourd during exploration this item becomes much better. As long as you manage to fully refill your flask even if it's just a single charge from a will mode the next time you drink you will go back to full health which is of course super useful. Next to your gourd your other gear is also pretty important. What I found is that progression is pretty linear meaning that any new armor or weapon you unlock for crafting is probably better than what you're currently using. On top of that the game frequently hands you things you need right before you need them. So if you're suddenly able to craft a set of armor that's more resistant to lightning then you can probably guess what the next boss's main damage type is going to be. So yeah not upgrading to better gear is pretty much always a mistake. There is one small exception though because some armor sets have buffs that trigger on specific moves and if you haven't unlocked that move yet the perk is kind of pointless. Luckily respecking is free and conveniently available at any shrine so you can reallocate skill points to make sure you're getting the most out of your new gear. You'll need will to craft items though so that's another reason to keep an eye out for those modes and you also want to watch for the breakable bolts that look like this. These give you a small amount of will and if you consistently break them over the course of your journey it will definitely add up. And overall not skipping on these smaller regular enemies when you come across them will also help you build up your will in no time. Subscribe for way more Black Myth Wukong content. Again check the game via the special link in the video description. A like would be awesome and you can watch another tips video by clicking on the screen. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.